Namaste. Let us do some practice first. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Being comfortable and carefree. Looking inside the forehead. Look inside the forehead in the space and start breathing gently the short breath through the nostrils into the rib case so that you feel the expansion and contraction of the rib case. Continue breathing, paying attention, or looking deep inside the forehead in the space, maintaining a comfortable posture. Continue breathing. You are a seeker, so I need not to say a disclaimer. And you are, after all, breathing gently and paying your attention on deep inside the forehead. Now say Om Shanti when you are looking into the space, but the breathing continues but the breathing continues. Now stop this breathing. Now move the mind slowly, gently on the head and the neck. As if you are, your mind is touching the skin of the head and the neck. And experience, sensation, Relaxation and stillness. Moving the mind on the right arm as if mind is touching the skin of the right arm. 
and experiencing sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Move the mind on the left arm, feeling the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. I can only say that you simply become aware of the left arm. That very awareness means the mind is there. Mind knows here is the left arm. And then you experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the entire rib case in the front and the back and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the belly Feel and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Now be aware of the right leg. Be aware of the right leg. Feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the left leg. Awareness of the left leg and experience sensation, relaxation and stillness. Awareness of the entire body <clears throat> from the top of the head to the toes. Sensation, relaxation and stillness in the body. In that state, look at your breath. Check, body is in the state of stillness. There is a relaxation. And in that state, you are looking at the breath the flow of the breath going in and out. Do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. You're just watching as the breath going in, as the breath coming out.
with every breath going in and every breath coming out, mentally drop the mantra on the breath, Om Shanti. Breath going in, Om Shanti. Breath coming out, Om Shanti. <clears throat> Body still, mind looking at the breath, breath not changing. When the breath goes in, you are dropping Om Shanti. But then there is one thing more, any other thought may enter into the mind. And you superimpose Om Shanti on that thought also. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. And now drop the mantra, but keep looking at the breath that is going in and out. Keep looking at the breath that is going in and out. In the state of sensation, Relaxation and stillness. Mm. 
We are already aware of the breath, the stillness in the body, and you experience the sense of comfort and ease. Sense of comfort and the ease in the body. So instead I started with being comfortable, I directly started with the breathing. This is also a possibility that every time you practice, this is another way of doing the practice. Sometimes the mind is not ready and it has a little bit hesitated. At that time, it is better to start the practice with the breathing and then go down to sensation, relaxation and stillness. Then with the breath awareness, then breath awareness with Om Shanti, and then even leave the Om Shanti. But keep your awareness on the breath. And now we are comfortable. We experience the sense of comfort and ease in the body. And the mind is also carefree. Carefree means the mind is not chasing any thought of the past or the worries, or any impression. Even these thoughts are coming and going, and you are able to let them go, let them come. And in that state, Mentally say, Asatoma Satrigamaya. Mentally, Asatoma Satrigamaya. Asatoma Satrigamaya. Simple translation. Lead me from the false to the real. Today we are going to talk about what is real self. We remember what is false self. I'm into anxiety, false self. I have a lot of problem with others, false self. I don't agree and therefore I am stressed, false I. Real eye, not affected. That is what we are going to talk, understand today. Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Simple meaning. Lead me from darkness to the light or ignorance to the wisdom. So anytime we have anxiety, duality, conflict, stress and suffering, it is because of our ignorance. And when we remove the ignorance, these anxiety and the stress dissolves. That is what we have to learn. Just by knowing it, yes, knowing the real self. Mrityodama Mritangamaya Mrityodama Mritangamaya Mrityodama Mritangamaya Mortality to immortality. We all have the fear of the death. Why we have the fear of the death? Because we claim falsely we are the body and the mind complex. We are deeply attached to the body and the mind complex. It creates a kind of a delusion. 
and the fear of death always remains. So our master says that once we understand clearly that we are not the body and the mind complex, we are beyond that. How, where, when, that is what we are going to talk about in our today's understanding. But don't, there is another way. There are three levels of understanding. Uh, not three levels of understanding, but there are three levels every object, every person in the world has. So you have been reciting the mantra, I believe so. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. Let everyone be happy. When we say everyone should be happy, that very happiness is the subtlest level. Below that we have a subtle level that is the mind and below that there is a physical level. So we have a physical level, we have a mental and subtle level and what we call the spiritual level of the consciousness is at the is very subtlest. So we need to explore that, that consciousness, which is of the nature of happiness. That is why we say that let happiness be, let everyone be happy. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Sarvesham shantir bhavatu. Let everyone be in peace. What it means? We are not looking at their outer level, the physical or the mental. We are looking at their spiritual level. Every thing has that spiritual, the higher level, the subtlest level. At that level, let there be peace for everyone. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Let everyone be complete in its soul. Why, why we say that? The sense of completeness, idea, sense, experience of completeness opens the area, opens the gateway to the higher consciousness. Why? Because that real self is always complete in itself. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Let there be auspiciousness, blessing and the grace should fall upon each and every one. Your mind is saying, let everyone be in peace, let everyone be happy, let everyone be complete. So that mind starts looking for that real self, which is complete in itself, which is permanent peace and permanent happiness, which has only one thing, the grace, nothing less, nothing more. And just live, be into that state. Mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om 
Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Open your eyes slowly be into that state and listen patiently and calmly. I told you the story of the lion cub who was raised by the buffaloes in the forest, wild buffaloes. So he was behaving like the buffaloes eating grass, full of running when the lion and the tiger chases the buffaloes. That lion cub was lost in the forest and raised by the buffaloes. But he is still a young lion. But he behaved like the buffaloes was not aware of his real nature. I have a fear and anxiety and duality and a conflict. I am not aware of my real nature. That is what I want to say. Any time, every time, we are surrounded by anxiety, duality, and a conflict. First thing our master says, recognize. Living in the company of buffaloes, a lion does not become buffaloes. And so it happened that the lion caught this lion cub and pushed him near the river and asked him to look inside the river into the water. And there the lion cub realized his shape and the size. And then the lion roared and asked the lion cub to roar. The lion cub also roared and uh, he left the company of buffaloes. So the mind can leave the company of anxiety, duality, conflict, stress. The moment we roar like a lion cub, that I am the real self. But then what is this real self? Our intellect, our mind keeps that query. Okay, I understood what the story, but what is this real self? And that is what we are going to study. This is the first step out of the 40 step. Never forget what we, what we understood in the last session. We should contemplate and reflect on what is the real self and how to attain the real self. Wisdom comes through the continuous contemplation. If you are repeating again and again in your mind, you reflect on it, the wisdom dawns. Why we should contemplate continuously? Because mind absorbs into the real nature. Why we have to do it regularly? It is like watering the plant, watering the sapling every day. It becomes a mighty tree.
I know, so how much time I should spend? It is not about the time. It is about the timing. When, when the seeker inside you is ready, enlightenment takes no time. It's not about the time. It's about the timing. Should I understand the meaning of the real self first? Yes, obviously. We should understand the meaning of the real self first. And not only understanding, but we have to repeat in our head through contemplation. So digestion takes time. And once this knowledge is digested, it unlocks. What it unlocks? You have a deeper insight. And that insight gives you a flash of, oh, here, this is the real self. What technique can help me go deeper? You are already doing it. You are doing the practice. To get into that deeper state, it is like to, if you want to learn swimming, you have to get into the water. You are already into that water of contemplation, practice. It works. You allow these teachings, you allow the understanding of the nature of the real self to go inside. Sometimes we don't allow, oh no, no, I don't have time. No, internally, internalizing. I believe you understand the meaning of the internalizing. What is the nature of the real self? Now, but before I go further, what do you think you are? I'm body and mind complex. You can address yourself as with the name, with the gender, with the age. We are none of them. Because we are so many heavily conditioned by the society culture that Mind does not want to leave the obsession about the body-mind complex. No, that this is what I am. I cannot say I am of the nature of pure awareness, pure consciousness, of the nature of peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. It seems cynical. So when it seems cynical, it means the mind is not ready. I have to see it inside me. And then I have to contemplate and understand. So there are six characteristics of the real self. The first characteristic is, is it is eternal. What does it mean by eternal? It transcends the time. What it means by it transcends the time, it transcends the past, present, and the future. Means it is beyond the past, present, and the future. What idea, what thought comes to your mind, but when it transcends the past, uh, present, and the future, it means it is neither born. It is neither born nor it will die. So that real self, I am of the nature of the real self that is never born, that never dies. How can you make me understand through an example? Like a cinema screen, like a TV screen. You watch TV every day. Does the TV screen changes? No. What changes? The soap opera, the series, the news. 
the news is not in the TV, but it appears on the TV screen. It is not inside the TV, but it appears on the TV screen, the same thing, all over anxiety, pleasure, duality, conflict, appears on the TV screen, which is the real self. But that TV screen is not at all affected. Same with the real self. We have to dig deep inside. That is why we say the real self exist beyond the time. It is not subject to decay or the death because if it anything that transcends time, uh, then it is. We are starting uh, this series in a totally different way. So now we have done a lot of practices. We are a seeker. And remember these six characteristics of the real self. The master, in one of the greatest uh, texts, you, you sent me the message about Gita. So these six characteristics are mentioned by the master in the Gita. That is what we are. So real self is first characteristic. The real self is beyond time. Now, if it is beyond time, it is not subject to decay, decay or the death, because it is neither born, nor it will die. The same thing I gave an example of the screen, TV screen. Just at the sky, the sky holds all the passing clouds but always retains its essence. We remain unchanged. We means that real self remain unchanged by events coming and going across the stages of life. We identify with the body and the mind complex. The body is born on a particular day, body has to go on the other day. So we get lost into the changing life, circumstances, events, body, mind, intellect, ego. Non-seekers get caught into it. The seekers still wants to know what is behind that change. There must be something that does not change which causes all the changes. The false eye feels anxiety, duality, conflict, and stress. The real eye has nothing to do with it. The second characteristics of the real self, it is their truth. Where is truth? Anything that does not change remains same all the time. That is known as the truth. Unchanging reality. Is there anything that does not change that you know in the world? Everything is changing. That is why it is taking time to know the real self because mind wants to know it and the mind is so much obsessed with the idea of the change everywhere. Mind itself is changing. Another problem. Mind itself is changing. So what is changing cannot know what does not change. It means I have to transcend the mind. So those tools and techniques and methods are explained in the Eastern wisdom. How not to purify the mind. How to purify the mind and how to transcend the mind to experience that state of the real self, which is unchanging. The second characteristic is, it is the truth.
the real self. All of our false assumption, wrong notions, constantly changing identity, constant changes in the body and the mind complex has nothing to do with the real self. I just gave an example of TV screen and the series, whatever is changing, that is not the screen. So I have to contemplate, reflect, and practice to reach to that state. Third characteristic, first, eternal. I have explained what is eternal. Then I have explained it that it is the truth. Third is it is all pervading. That real self of a real nature is all pervading equally within and beyond all forms so that it can keep the entire existence together. Real self is just think of, for the sake of understanding, just think that it is like a space. Do you have a space inside your house? Yes. Do I have a space inside my house? Yes. Are, the, are these two spaces or only one space? Tell me. If, you're my, if your mind tells that there are two spaces, you are wrong. It is only one space. One space pervades everywhere that is holding all of our homes and buildings and places in the highways. So when we go out, we see the streets and the homes, but fact is the space is already there. Same way the real self is already there. But we see body-mind complex, we see brother and sister and son and the daughter, and then then because we have divided so once you have divided so you have likes and dislikes are you getting it space cannot be divided you told me that can i learn gita yes so i started with the, uh, this uh, session you know i will pick up some of the gems from the gita and we will talk about it so the third characteristics of the real self that it is all pervading. The self cannot be confined to a location. You see that 9-11 took place, you know, those twin towers were destroyed. So the space was not destroyed. We build a house, oh, here is a lot size, and we build a house and then we demolish. Nothing happens to the space, whether you build a house or you demolish it. That is the nature of the real self. That is why we say the real self is all pervading. Real self is all pervading. Three characteristics we have understood. It is eternal, real self is truth, and the real self is all pervading. The fourth one is little typical. Pay attention. Uh, if I say beyond objectification, what it means? I know the mouse. I have objectified the mouse. What it means? The object is mouse and I know the mouse. Object is screen, computer, monitor, and I know the monitor. Are you getting it? 
whatever I in you know in the world through objectification. Anything that becomes an object and I know it. Self cannot become the object. The real self cannot become the object. Not very typical, but you will definitely understand. Can my eye, can see eyes, can my eyes, can see my eyes? No. But still I know the eyes are there. The real self cannot be objectified. There is another meaning. The real self cannot be known by the sense organs. Real self cannot be known by the mind. It can only be known in deeper state of meditation. That is why we close our eyes in every meditation because we want to know the real self. Eyes in all these sense organs cannot know the real self. Are you getting it? So it is beyond objectification. That is the meaning. Eyes can see different forms but cannot turn to look at themselves. I said you get a little, 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 not very, but a little challenging to our intellect. So we have done, remember, real self is eternal, real self is true, real self is all-pervading, and the real self is beyond objectification or simple language. It cannot be known by the sense organs in the mind. It cannot become an object. And the fifth characteristics, it is non-dual. Non-dual. Or you can say it cannot be the doer and the enjoyer. But I'm doing something. What I am doing, I am teaching, it is body-mind complex. Do you see that? Where is the I? When you say, here I am, so where is that I inside you? That I-ness is always related to the body-mind complex. That, that is related to an I-thought. So that real self is neither the doer nor the experiencer. Does the space in your house experiences anything? Nothing. The space remains the same. The waves in an ocean goes very high, but there is no change in the essence that is water. Water does not change. It appears in the form of the waves. It appears in the form of a tsunami, but it does not change. That is the nature of the real self. All the waves unite in the common ocean. All, we are all waves at the body-mind level. And we, we are combined by that real self. Just remember, we are going to open up. First thing, even if your mind says, I don't understand. No, no, no worry. You remember, and so that we can understand. In the six characteristics that it is not subject to change, it never changes. Have you seen anything that does not change? But we can guess it, the space does not change, the intrinsic nature of the water does not change. 
you, you, you drink the water here and you drink in India or you drink in, in Africa, the essential nature of the water remains the same. Essential nature of the space remains the same. Essential nature of the heat remains the same. Outer form in the name changes. That is the nature of the real self. Well, we are going to understand. I will open up each and every uh, aspect of it so that you have a clarity of understanding. So when I say that this is beyond time, what it means by beyond time and living in the eternal present, that is the meaning. It means being fully present and engaged in whatever we are doing right now, rather than being distracted by the memories of the past or the future projection. So this gives a clue, an idea, an understanding. This is the way we should be living in our life. When having a conversation with someone, be completely attentive rather than mentally going into the memory lane or projecting something into the future. That is the message. Message is this: we have we have to realize the real self. That's another uh, topic, but this is related. How can I seek that real self that transcends the space, time, and objects by regular practice, by consistent learning and listening, by contemplation and reflection? So through contemplation and reflection, your mind tends to move inside. And when it moves inside, you one day you will have that insight into the meditation. So that is why we see meditation, introspection, contemplation, reflection are the ways of exploring the real self. Truth is one, parts are many. So we have many, many ways, and many of the ways I have already taught you, and I'm going to teach you further. All pervading. The real self is all pervading. You told me about the Gita, and that's why we have started learning the first lesson. So I will mix up the teaching from this text which we have been understanding and the Gita, so that it becomes it becomes easy to understand. So when I when we have just understood that the real self cannot become the object, so when mind knows anything, once it be, once an a thing becomes an object. And the moment, if there is an object, then it has name in the form, then it, it occupies the space, but the real self is all pervading. It is beyond the name in the form. That is why it cannot become an object. Did you get it? You have to listen to this again and again, <laughs> so you will get it. So simple, any object, what do you mean by an object? It has a name, it has a form, it, it occupies a space. But the real self cannot be an object. Why? It cannot be confined with the name and the form, like the space. Can you confine the space with the name and the form? No. Similarly, the real self. That is why the real self cannot be known by the mind in the sense organ. That is why it transcends the end. But how to know that real self? 
contemplation, reflection, absorbed into meditation, absorbed into meditation. That is the meaning we should go beyond the name and the form. The space cannot be confined with the name and the form. And the consciousness is like the space. The, the gold can be molded into different names like ring, bracelet, necklace, but the essence gold always remains the same. The very essence is the real self. So when you learn Eastern wisdom, when you contemplate and reflect, it gives you that vision, that eye. It gives you the third eye to see that real self. So when we live from the essence, when we live, when we think, speak, and act out of the real self, we don't live, don't think and speak and act out of the ego, then what happens? You feel, you experience your motivation to always express peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. Only one goal in life. You are doing your personal duties to express peace and happiness. You are living your social life to express peace and happiness. You are living your professional life, family life to just express peace and happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. When we find peace, everything will fall into place. When we find happiness, everything we find is expressing that happiness. We have a sense of that emptiness and loneliness, and that is why we are not able to see that peace and happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. That is only the beginning of the Gita, first lesson. We are going to combine the different. We need to understand in detail. Self is eternal. Remember, it is ever existing, unchanging, imperishable. The changing bodies are merely houses for the dwelling self which transcends the mortal. Know the deathless self, which was never born and will never die. Krishna is the master in the Gita and Krishna declares. What dies, lies, what dies, lies before us. What never dies, what never changes, that lies beyond us. The self alone is the real. The world is constantly changing. It is not long lasting. We need to understand this. The self pervades all like space. It cannot be fragmented and divided. That infinite self cannot be objectified. I just discussed. It is a state of the pure consciousness. That is what we are going to discuss in detail. Thank you, my friend. Namaste.